ESPN's John Bucci-Gross with Armin in the back on 104.5 The Team. You're home for New York sports. And Bucci, you were at RPI Union on Friday, man. What made you uh, want to take the take the about two-hour drive, two-and-a-half-hour drive to go to RPI on Friday? Yeah, I, I like, you know, going to a, the college hockey games on the weekend. Um, I like seeing the teams, you know, myself in person. And uh, just, you know, we do regular season games on ESPN now. We broadcast them. And, of course, we do the Frozen Four and the, all, the entire NCAA tournament that we do at ESPN. So, you know, you never know when you might get one of these teams in your region. It's just, and I, I, mean, I just love going to games anyway. I love going to these different barns. I've never been to RPI before and take in the experience. And uh, so I have a better understanding of it when I write about it or talk about it. or uh, So just see you know, all kinds of different factors. So now that you've been to the game, where does RPI and Union rank as far as college hockey rivalries go? Yeah, certainly. You know, it's right there. There's a lot of them. You know, there's a there's a lot of great rivalries around the country, and and nobody's is really the best or anything. It's just they're all different. They're all awesome, and uh, but certainly it's uh it's right there. It's probably you know one of the ones that are more under the radar for sure. Um, so it was great to experience it in person and uh, and to and to feel the the passion between the two schools. Yeah, at Houston Fieldhouse, and it's funny too because you know RPI goes into the rivalry on the weekend. They're one and five on the year. They sweep Union. I mean, the parody in college hockey. Uh, how beautiful is that? Especially with rivalries, all bets are off the table, right? Yeah, no, no doubt about it. And you know, the United States and Canada keep producing more and more good players, and so you know, there's only what 59 Division One hockey schools. So they're just going to get each team is just going to get more and more deep, and. uh and just have this, you know, this this will be this will be the norm. I mean, Union won the national championship last year, and slowly but surely, there'll be more people who have that chance to do it as uh, North America continues to learn how to train hockey players better. You know, what's better for them at a young age? What should be focused on in their teenage years? There's a whole template now. There's a whole guide for coaches to go by to bring the best out of players and to keep producing great players. And so, it's just going to get more and more deep. ESPN's John Butchergross with Orman in the back on 104.5 The Team. What are the uh, what are the chances that Union or RPI are players in the uh, national championship uh, trophy this year? You know, it'll be a challenge for both of them. You know, the first step is obviously make the tournament. Um, only 16 teams do, and so you really you, know, you can't mess around here. You got to get off to a you know pretty solid start and just uh, and continue to play good hockey for you know for the rest of the year. It's a um, you know, computer-based system, so it's it's uh it's all pretty dry, and so obviously for RPI to have these two wins over Union are huge for them right now, and certainly they hope Union continues to play well because obviously they they want those wins to to be to stay good wins, and I think Union will. They're a, they have a great goaltender, a real good system in place. They they lost an awful lot last year, so much leadership with you know Gossis Bear and 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 Bodie and Carr, just a lot, a lot of it, but. They recruit well. The freshmen look pretty good to me again. The freshmen that were last year, uh, you know, that are sophomores now, are uh, you know solid players again. So it's just a matter of you know finding their identity, finding what they had last. Year. It was a very special group last year, and, and uh, it it may take a while to find that for them this year. John Butchergross, uh, you can find him on Twitter at Butchergross. He's a great follow. And Bucci, take us through your day because I I've seen you on Sports Center early this week. Uh, you have the great tweets. I mean, I'll wake up about five thirty in the morning, and you are already blowing up my timeline with some of the best facts and stats from the night before. Do you just get up and start researching for Sports Center and those kind of flow, or do you do you do those on a daily basis as is? Yeah, I try to get them out there. At first, I did it just from um, you know. For myself to kind of stay in the narrative of all the different sports that we need to cover, to have an understanding of what's going on, and just sometimes these these facts will stick with me. So if I'm doing Sports Center and I'm talking to an analyst, I can recall from that morning cutting and pasting a certain fact that will help me with my discussions, help me when I do a highlight to again offer some sort of you know context and, and a narrative of what's happening. And then I find that people start to kind of enjoy them and depend on them, so it became you know. Also, just to do it for the for the followers and for people who watch Sports Center, and I did it. It became almost you know, uh, do it for them kind of a thing. So, uh, so yeah, it's just a way for me to help remember things and and you know, so help people start their day and uh, it just you know, it's a demanding job, so I want to stay on top of things. Yeah, Bucci. One of the most shocking things I've uh, I've seen on the interwebs uh, in the last day or so is that. 
Apparently, Alex Rodriguez is dishonest enough to pay his cousin to keep his mouth shut about PEDs. Am I the only one shocked by this? Or rich enough. Yeah, I'd, uh, you know, obviously he's someone who is desperate, reached the point of desperation to protect himself. But now, hey, the, the suspension's over, starts clean. Hopefully he can stay clean and just finish out this career. And, you know, he'll slowly, you know, slowly wither away into the night. It'll be a, it'll be a soft landing for his career. And, um, and who knows if he'll even play for the Yankees this year. He'll find, try to find another way to deal with him and, uh, and everything. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a sad end to what was a, a pretty, a pretty bright beginning. Yeah, very promising in the beginning for sure. ESPN's John Bucci, a buddy of ours, uh, was at the golf tournament with us last year. Uh, Bucci, in regards to Sports Center and and being the anchor, where does college football playoff and in covering that and this year just the uncertainty and what decisions the committee could or could not take into factor? Uh, how how fascinating has it been from your end as far as how the college football playoff, how the rankings and how this is playing out? Yeah, I think it's very interesting. It's a lot of fun. You know, the NFL is obviously the most important, uh, our most uh, popular sport um, in America by far. We all knew that. And uh, but the, you know, the data shows that college football is the second most popular sport, and so it's a uh, it's a big deal. And it's a like I said, the popularity is, is second only to the NFL. I'm not sure if people realize that. I don't know if they assumed it was NBA or or baseball or you know just one of the one of the major sports, uh, one of the major professional sports. But it's actually College football is the second most popular sport, so obviously this is going to get a lot of attention, and it got a, it's gotten a lot of attention. And it's you know as the, as the weeks go by, it, it should kind of play itself out. We still could have a, obviously a controversy at four. Um, there could be three teams who feel like they're worthy of that fourth spot. They probably are, you know. But it, but it's tough with football because you play so few games and. Um, compared to other sports where you have just a larger amount of games to choose from, and you probably can't quite complain as much. But here, you know, you only play a certain amount of games before the uh, before the bowl season, so it, it's tough. But it's, I think it's been very interesting. It's been good for the sport. People who felt like it would take away from the sport, it clearly hasn't. If anything, it's created elimination games in November. So you almost have like a two-, three-month NCAA tournament um, as teams try to stay alive and survive in advance. And you could come back from a loss uh, from last week, but it's going to be pretty tough. So obviously you want to stay on that zero or one loss record and avoid that second loss, although it's possible a two-loss team could get in, but I'd be surprised. Uh, Bucci, we are your home for New York sports, so I, I just found it interesting that you uh, you posted a, a pretty unique stat about the guy who beat up on the Giants last night. Uh, how special is Andrew Luck? Yeah, all of our guys love him. Um, obviously his demeanor looks to be just a plus how he deals with his teammates. He's uh self deprecating. He's obviously sensitive, very self-aware. And so he understands tone, just so many things like that. And then you add in that he's six, four big, thick, 230, 240 pound guy. Um, who's, you know, very smart Stanford grad architecture major and all that stuff. It's just, it's just, there's so much there. From size to strength to acumen to toughness, he's a tough guy, um, and so he just—he really—he's the one guy that has the complete package of all the guys under you know 35. John Butchergross, you can find out his, you can see his uh, great work on Twitter at Butchergross, and of course the Bucci Overtime Challenge as well. BucciOvertimeChallenge dot com uh, benefits numerous charities. Love it every year, Bucci. I tweet you every single night uh, <laughs> with your overtime challenge. For those in the capital region who have not gotten involved thus far, explain to us how it works. Yeah, very simple. A hockey game goes to overtime. It's really built best for the playoffs um, when, when obviously they play till someone wins, and you pick one guy in each team you think will win. And we give away a few T-shirts. You just mentioned the website, which I appreciate, and we sell some some of our T-shirts and winter hats and baby onesies and coasters and koozies, and uh, and I give away all the money um, come every July 1st to different charities, either run by someone, either hockey-led or hockey-themed, whether it's buy nice time for veterans and then come back from Afghanistan, or even if it's a hockey player who who heads a foundation like Dominic Moore for his late wife. It can be, you know, as long as it's hockey-led or hockey-themed, and we give away the money. So it's a lot of fun. It's not so much built for the regular season because of the short overtime, but we do it every once in a while. But ideally it's built for the playoffs, and that's when it really gains momentum. So just a way to heighten your TV viewing pleasure by having low-grade low, low grade betting. 
<laughs> and it has, uh, of course, uh, some of the best apparel that any hockey fan needs as well. Bucci Overtime Challenge.com. John Bucciagross of ESPN. John, we look forward to your continuing college hockey coverage and uh, check you out on Sports Center every day as well. It was good talking to you, my friend. We'll be in touch. I love that part of New York. Thanks so much, guys.